In the introduction to queuing, we talked about some basic ideas. Here we look at the simplest case, deterministic queuing. How do we think about this? We can look at deterministic queuing with an input and output diagram. This is sometimes called a Newell curve, named after Gordon Newell, who is perhaps the first person to use this widely. What you're looking at is time on the x-axis and the number of vehicles in the y-axis. Now we have a departure rate in red, how quickly vehicles leave the front of the queue, or how quickly people get their parking space at the Washington Avenue ramp, or how quickly somebody checks out the check of the checkout line, or how quickly someone pays the cashier at the barbershop. In this case, we're assuming that the departure rate is uniform. It's a straight line. The same number of vehicles depart every minute, or every hour, or every second. There's an arrival rate. How do people arrive at the back of the queue? If the number of arrivals is less than the number of departures and it's uniform, there'll be no queue. If the queue can serve one vehicle per minute and one vehicle arrives every two minutes, the server, the checkout clerk, the barber, the traffic light doesn't have a standing queue and you get served immediately upon arrival. If the number of vehicles that's arriving is greater than the server rate, a queue forms. Based on the departure rate and the arrival rate pair data, the delay of every individual vehicle can be obtained. Using the IO queuing diagram, it is possible to find the delay for every individual vehicle. The delay of the i vehicle is the time of departure minus the time of arrival, t sub 2 minus t sub 1. Total delay is the sum of delays of each vehicle, which is the area in the triangle between the a of, a of t and d of t curves. Let's say a server can serve exactly one vehicle per minute and two vehicles per minute arrive, that is, one vehicle exactly every 30 seconds arrives. One of those will get served, and then one of them has to wait a minute to be served. So the first vehicle is served, and the second vehicle has to wait exactly 30 seconds. Then there's a standing queue when the next customer arrives, and a queue begins to form. We can draw this graphically and see how, the queue, how quickly the queue forms. Now if the process continued forever, the queue would grow to infinity. If you forever had more vehicles arriving at the back of the queue than could be discharged from the front of the queue, the queue would just grow and grow and grow and grow. Some kinds of queues might feel like that, but if that really happened on a road, we would be dealing with last night's congestion this morning. That doesn't make a lot of sense because it's the same cars this morning that want to use the traffic that were in traffic going home last night. What happens is that at some point, the number of vehicles arriving is less than the service rate, and the queue begins to get shorter and shorter and shorter. We have a rate of arrivals that's lower than the rate of departures. But we already have a standing queue. In this example, we might denote hour 1 as a sub 1 and hour 2 as a sub 2. We can look at a given time and we can see that the number of vehicles in the queue at a given time. The graph tells you how long the queue is in terms of the number of vehicles and for any given vehicle we can see how long they have to wait. The vehicle arrives at the time where the time index crosses the arrival curve on the left, leaves at the point where the horizontal line crosses the departure curve on the right. The delay is represented by the length of the black line. The total delay in the system is simply the space in the yellow triangle, which since you've had algebra and geometry, you should be able to determine. This is what's called a deterministic queue. It's deterministic because we know the departure rate and we know the arrival rate. We can compare the Newell curve with the link performance function. Note that the Newell curve is rotated from the link performance function, which has flow on the x-axis and time on the y-axis. The two curves come from different areas of transportation and so represent the data a bit differently, which has the potential to create confusion. Remember the x-axis is time and the y-axis is the number of vehicles that arrive, and all of the axes should be labeled. We'll do an example. Suppose the vehicles arrive at a rate of 500 vehicles per hour for hour 1 and 300 vehicles per hour for hour 2. The server can discharge 400 vehicles per hour. What is the standing queue at the end of 2 hours? What is the maximum queue? And what is the total delay? Well, the standing queue at the end of 2 hours, 800 vehicles arrive in 2 hours, 800 vehicles depart. So the standing queue is zero. What is the maximum queue? 500 vehicles arrive in hour one, 400 vehicles depart. The standing queue at the end of hour one is 100 vehicles. What is the total delay? There's two triangles. There's one triangle if you'd like. We can break it into two triangles, an accumulating triangle, which we can measure the area of as one half base times the height, or one half times one hour times 100 vehicles, which is, gives us 50 vehicle hours, and a discharging triangle. Hour 2, 1 half base times height again, 1 half times 1 hour times 100 vehicles also equals 50 vehicle hours, so the total is 100 vehicle hours. In this case it was symmetric, but there's no guarantee of symmetry here.